taught you to hate the texture of your hair? Who taught you to hate the color of your skin to such extent that you bleach to get like the white man? Who taught you to hate the shape of your nose and the shape of your lips? Who taught you to hate yourself from the top of your head to the soles of your feet? Brought up in the United States, Malcolm X had seen and suffered from the systemic racism against African Americans all his life, with his own father having likely been lynched by white supremacists. Soon he, Malcolm X, became a prominent leader of the black separatist movement. He believed that white people could never be allies of black people in their struggle for justice. For this reason, he described Martin Luther King's I Have a Dream speech as the farce on Washington, writing in his autobiography that, who ever heard of angry revolutionists all harmonizing, we shall overcome, while tripping and swaying along arm in arm with the very people they were supposed to be angrily revolting against? Yet when Malcolm X went to Hajj, the Muslim pilgrimage, his perspective on the white races changed profoundly. In his now famous letter from Mecca, he wrote, During the past 11 days here in the Muslim world, I have eaten from the same plate, drunk from the same glass, and slept on the same rug while praying to the same God with fellow Muslims whose eyes were the bluest of blue, whose hair was the blondest of blonde, and whose skin was the whitest of white. And in the words and in the deeds of the white Muslims, I felt the same sincerity that I felt among the black African Muslims of Nigeria, Sudan, and Ghana. We were truly all the same, brothers, because their belief in one God had removed the white from their minds the white from their behavior, and the white from their attitude. Here he used the word white to mean the racist attitudes he had fought against in so many white people of his day. He went on to write, I could see from this that perhaps if white Americans could accept the oneness of God, then perhaps too they could accept in reality the oneness of man, and cease to measure and hinder and harm others in terms of their differences in color. What is it about the Islamic belief in the unity of God that Malcolm X felt would corrode Western racism? Well, he had experienced an alternative all his life. In Christianity, God is split into three persons, the idea known as the Trinity. As part of this, we are told that God chose to incarnate himself into human form as Jesus. It was this concept that allowed the idea of God to become a vehicle for the racism of man. Those white Europeans who already thought that they were superior, who found it politically expedient to demonize dark-skinned peoples, suddenly found a way of making their racism religious. God, they said, was a white man. Just because it makes you feel uncomfortable doesn't mean it has to change. You know, I mean, yeah. Jesus was a white man too, but you, you know, it's like... For well over a thousand years, Christians have been depicting Jesus, an Arab, as a white, blue-eyed European. They thus solidified racism in their culture and provided a pretext for the white saviors to colonize the brown and black people of the world. God's white, and so are we, they said, while forcibly converting slave populations of West Africans to that belief too. They thus entrenched in the minds of white Americans and Europeans the notion of their race as pure, heavenly, and divine. In the minds of the African American slaves, however, such depictions only reinforce their own sense of worthlessness and inferiority. With the universalization of many aspects of Western culture, not least Christianity, through colonialism to South and North America, Australasia, India, Africa, and the Far East, this mindset reached billions. But Christianity is not the only religion to be used as a vehicle for racism. In Hinduism too, almost all of the 33 million gods are fair-skinned, with only a few being dark. Indeed, the most famous Hindu epic is the story of Ramayana of Valmiki, in which the fair-skinned hero Ram banishes the dark-skinned demon god Ravana. It is no surprise that religion is thought to play a fundamental role in the perpetuation of the deeply racist caste system of India, in which the Brahmins, who are invariably the fairest-skinned, constitute the highest caste, and the so-called untouchables, or Dalits, who are invariably darker-skinned, constitute the lowest. What is the common thread here? Christianity and Hinduism are very different in many respects, yet it is their belief that God can be divided which makes the difference. The belief in multiple gods in whatever form means that God is no longer the most perfect being. 
He's no longer immaterial, transcendent, and beyond the beyond. He can now be limited and broken up into crude material forms. But here's the problem. When God is not one, he is not God. He becomes just like everything else, subject to colour, form, and shape. As soon as that happens, you suddenly see God popping up everywhere in religious iconography, with pictures and statues featuring prominently in both the Christian and Hindu cultures. It is this that opens the door for religion to be racialized, for God to become fair-skinned rather than dark-skinned, for the racism of the few to become the religion of the many. And I always ask my mother, I said, Mother, how come is everything white? I said, why is Jesus white with blonde and blue eyes? Why is the Lord's <laughs> Supper all white men? Angels are white, Pope and, and um, Mary and every, even the angels. I said, Mother, when we die, do we go to heaven? She said, naturally, we go to heaven. I said, well, what happened to all the black angels when they took the pictures? <laughs> when one considers, therefore, the Islamic teaching that God, Allah, is perfectly one, indivisible, without form or human incarnation, never to be depicted in any way, one begins to understand the deep underlying wisdom behind it. God is above and beyond all of us, and we can only reach him through our righteousness. Becoming like God becomes a spiritual journey, not a material reality. But the wisdom of the idea that God is one goes even deeper, for it is a statement about the fundamental nature of humanity too. If God is one, then we all share the same common origin, and no one person can claim superiority over another. This sentiment found its greatest manifestation in the last sermon of the Prophet Muhammad, peace be on him, delivered on the 6th of March in the year 632, on the plain of Arafat, where Muslims like Malcolm X to this day perform the Hajj. He said, All mankind is from Adam and Eve. An Arab has no superiority over a non-Arab, nor a non-Arab has any superiority over an Arab. A white has no superiority over a black, nor a black has any superiority over white, except by piety and good action. Does this mean that there are no racist Muslims? Of course not. But it does mean that in Islam they find no justification for their racism, and further, that Islam is a powerfully anti-racist ideology. If America and the West in general wants to be free from the scourge of racism, they need to look deeper and further back than a few years or even a few decades. They need to look at the multi-generational consequences of the belief that God can become man, and that when he did, even God preferred to be white rather than black. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe and hit that bell to enable notifications to know when we've dropped a new video. And check out rationalreligion.co.uk for more articles, videos, and other content. Peace be on you.